Hey, I'm Casmo, and today we're going to talk about how to use the Stabilator. Stingray is pound six, you're clear to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south to north, left in, right out. All right, guys, welcome aboard the H64D. Today we're going to talk about how to use the Stabilator. And our control is located here on the Collective. And we can find those key mappings here. And you're going to want all three of these as one of them is nose down, one of them is nose up. And the central switch to press uh, sets it back into auto. All right, sitting on the ground, we'll go ahead and execute a uh, nose down. So we're going to push on that uh, nose down button. You can see on our upfront display, we've got the manual stabe indicator on the UFD. And now I'm going to hit the central uh, reset position. And you can see that that goes away. So let's take a look outside and see what's happening. All right, so I'm going to hit the nose down switch. And we can see the stabilator is moving down to change that airflow. Uh, it's going to push the tail up and the nose down. And I'm going to hit the nose up. Which is going to push the tail down and the nose up. And then I'm going to hit that uh, reset, depress, and it goes back into auto mode. Uh, I will point out there's two ways to actually see the articulation happening in the cockpit other than what we've seen up at the UFD. Uh, first, we're going to go to, uh, we're on our engine page. We're going to hit the assist page and you can see that our stabilator position is now telling us that it's up or down. And we can also go to our flight page and you can see we've got an indication here. Now, typically this isn't very important uh, except for during shutdown when you want to uh, make sure that you have the stabilator set to zero. All right, one thing I forgot to mention on our assist page, we'll go back to our engine. This, we've got this nominal speed. Uh, this is just a speed that the aircraft is telling you if for whatever reason the stabilator fails into a fixed position, uh, this is the speed that you want to uh, stay at or below. Uh, otherwise you could get damage the aircraft. And this uh, number would then also be indicated on your flight page and your flight set page. All right, so let's go ahead and pick up the aircraft and we'll try and play around with it in flight. All right, so here we are at a hover. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the uh, nose down switch. See that the manual stab is on and we can see that nothing is happening. And again, that's just because there's no airflow over the stabilator right now. We're not in forward airspeed. So there's no forces acting upon the stabilator to push the nose down. I'm going to put it back into auto mode and then we'll uh, continue forward uh, down this runway here and we'll just get our airspeeds up to about 40 knots. All right, so we're about 40 knots over the runway and I'm going to try to hold us here and I'm going to go ahead and hit that stabilator button nose down. You can see I'm not really moving the cyclic forward. Uh, it's just because the nose has been pushed down by that stabilator. I'm going to pull it back up, bring it nose high. And that airflow is pushing that tail down now. And we are nose high. You can see that uh, there's really no movement of my cyclic there. That's all through the stabilator. Now let's go ahead and push it nose down as far as it'll go. A little bit of power, keeping our flight path vector forward. I'm going to hit 80 knots and let's see what happens. We've got the nose all the way down as far as we can. Flight path vector. It's on the horizon. Looking for 80 knots. Let's watch that UFD. Alright. You can see that auto stab fail message appears there and it's gone into auto mode. So above 80 knots, that's not going to let you uh, mess with the stabilator. It's going to go into an auto mode. And if we descend back below 80, it's going to remain in auto until we tell it to do otherwise. Now I'll push the nose down again. You see we're below 80, so it's allowing me to manually articulate the stabilator. And if I'm done messing with it, I just hit that uh, center to press and it goes back into auto mode. Now, why would you use this? It really kind of depends, uh, in my opinion, just kind of on your seating position. I'm a pretty tall guy. I never really had to use it uh, when flying the Apache. 
and I think honestly with the uh, seating arrangement the way it is in DCS everyone's kind of the same height and we're all kind of tall uh, I, I've never had to use it in flight uh, in DCS but I know I've had a lot of people ask me how to use it uh, generally speaking though it's in an auto mode meaning it's back there just doing whatever it needs to do to uh, keep the aircraft where it needs to be uh, but you can manipulate it so if you're at a low airspeed and for whatever reason you need the no nose uh, a little bit lower you can just kind of just tweak that a little bit and it may be a little bit uh, awkward because you're in a nose down position and you might think that you're descending just pay attention to that flight path vector uh, make sure that it's still on the horizon you may have to add a little bit of power just to uh, keep your altitude but it'll maintain that uh, nose down position for you and of course you can add in your uh, attitude hold that might help a little bit as well once altitude hold mode comes on that'll make it even easier all right guys just a quick video just kind of show how that stabilator works again anything below 80 knots you've got control of it and above 80 it's going to transition back into an auto mode hopefully this uh, clears up any questions you have about the stabilator if you have any other questions drop them in the comments below i appreciate you guys watching we'll talk to you later take it easy